What's happening guys? How are you doing? I hope you're having an awesome day. Today we're going to learn the basics, the essentials, an outline if you will, of Adobe Premiere and how things are just set up and um, do a quick cut to just get a feel for the program. So if you're new to Premiere, then this is going to be the video for you. So I know that your time is valuable and thank you for stopping by. Let's dive right in. So when we're first into Premiere, you will quickly see that there are a lot of little windows. There's, there's a lot of things to look at here, but do not be intimidated because all of these are just preset sections and windows that can all be moved around and all of these different workspaces up here, like assembly, editing, color effects, and so on, they're all pretty much the same thing, just built different ways. And you'll find once we get into everything, it's a little easier to understand and comprehend how things work and the mechanics behind everything. So the first thing we want to do is get some clips onto this project. You can either right click, go to import, or you can just open up a new tab and bring these in. So I'm going to click and drag them, drop them right into the project, and here they are. So when we import the files, You'll either have this view where these thumbnails are that you can hover over and quickly preview the clips or you might see the detail pane. The detail pane is obviously the details but it gives you more metadata like the frame rates, duration of the whole video and then you'll also have your resolutions too so you can see what's 4K, what's 1080, what's whatever resolutions that you're working with in your project. Now I'm gonna go back to the more visually appealing way, the icon view. What we need to do is essentially move these clips onto a functioning timeline. However, if we visit the timeline, there are no sequences. So we have to create a sequence. There's two ways to do this. You can either click and drag a clip onto the timeline to create a sequence based on the clip's properties, or what I like to do is actually go into new and sequence and I create a sequence manually the way I want to do it. So I want to work in a 1920 by 1080 environment that's 24 frames per second. So this first option is auto-selected for me. I'm good with that one. And then I'm gonna name the sequence to Snowy Forest. Hit OK. Now the timeline is populated with the sequence. The sequence is gonna be essentially the map. This is where you're gonna spend all your time working on the clips as far as cutting and um, puzzling them together. Now that we're at this step, we have a good foundation to start building on. What we need to do now is select a clip to get started. Say I want to start with the horse clip up here, double click it to bring it into the source monitor. The source monitor is more of a preview of the clips you're processing through your workflow to place on the timeline. That'll make a little more sense here in a second, but uh, this is where I'm gonna set my ins and outs. Ins and outs as far as the parts that I don't want to include when I'm moving it to the timeline. So for example, if I want to trim off just the beginning of this clip, maybe it took a little too long for the horse to uh, get down to the snow. Maybe I want to start it right about here. I can either click the mark in bracket or press I. And then I can set the out point to where I want the clip to end. So say it's right here. There's my out point. So in between these brackets is where I'm actually gonna bring down onto our timeline. So I just clicked and dragged it right down here. Now, because we manually created a sequence and the sequence information doesn't necessarily match the clip information, I'm just gonna keep the existing settings. Now you can see that on the left we have our source, which is the clip that we actually just brought onto the timeline, and to the right we have the program. The program monitor is going to be a compilation of the entire sequence that you were working on. So if we added a couple more clips here, say we uh, took this one and we wanted to get the horse walking away here's my end point and I just want the rest of the clip to play out click and drag it down next to our other clip now in the program monitor you can see scrubbing through this both clips are there so you can see where we're actually putting this together and building it out let's go ahead and grab the other clips the forest right about there Bring that onto the timeline. And let's grab a close-up of the Jeep tires. I know there's a nice little focus pull right here. So from here to where the focus comes to the back tire, there you go. And let's drag this clip next. And lastly, let's grab our wide shot, our drone shot of the Jeep. Now there's a little turn right here that I feel like is a little disruptive to the to the clip, so I really do want to trim this one up in a way right when the camera starts to pan. That's where I want to uh, move over. So right about there. Now let's drag this onto the sequence and we can see here we have a little composition. Now the last clip, this 
clip right here is actually the same one that's on the, the source monitor. The reason why it's so zoomed in is because this is actually a 4K clip. Now the rest of the clips that we've been working on are 1920 by 1080, while this one's 4K. It's four times the resolution, so that translates to two times zoomed in. What we want to do is make sure this clip is selected, come up to our source, and select this, these little double uh, chevron looking arrows, go down to effect controls, make sure it's selected down here, there we go. And so we have this clip selected, and we are in the effect controls. So what we want to do, since I know this is about four times the resolution, we're just going to take it down about half size. And um, there you go, there's our full clip. So what we've done is we've essentially taken a 4K clip and scaled it down to half its size, which means we're converting it to 1080p. If we want to get a better closer look at our timeline here, we have this control in the very bottom of the timeline or sequence panel, where we can click and drag to zoom in to the cursor, or zoom out. This is extremely handy when you have larger projects with tons of clips because you could just quickly dive in and then also zoom out and get like a bird's eye view of everything. So say we wanted to add some music to this. So what we'll do is go back to our files here. Um, I have one picked out under music and here is one from Ed Epidemic Sound. I'm going to drag that right onto our project and we have our audio file now. So you can do this again by double clicking or you can just click and drag the file directly onto the track. Now that we have our audio here, we can hit play and get a little preview of what's going on. Okay, as you can see, this is a pretty long clip. We do want to cut it down. So what we'll do is trim it back to right about here. I'm just gonna estimate towards the middle. And so now we have a gap. When you have a larger project, it's not gonna be as practical to just click and select these remaining clips and drag it over. Your clips will pour overflow to the right and it's gonna be really hard to select them all. So the magical way to do that is to ripple delete. And to do that, you will click the empty space, hold shift and hit delete. It like collapses it down to that first clip. You can also find that very tool over here on the left where we have the ripple edit tool and do the same thing, save a little bit of time by dragging back or forward the desired clip, and when you let go, they will all back into it, just like that. And then aside from Ripple Edit Tool, you have other cool things like Track, which is selects everything from the cursor over. You have the Slice Tool, which is something you will probably use quite often. And there's other ones like for like the Pin Tool for keyframing and, and Slip Tool. You'll probably be in the Selection Tool, and when needed, you'll use the other ones. So let's play our little video here. So I know that there's a beat right there with the, with the audio track. And I can expand the track down by dragging this lower. And there's a pretty rough cut. So let's play it back from the top and see what exactly happens here. That's probably where I would end it. I'm just gonna cut the music there, cut this one back. I feel like it's really long, but this is just a demonstration. So I'm gonna delete the rest of that audio just for the sake of keeping this short. So the graphics is what's gonna give us a nice title, a little overlay, something to caption or title this video. Up in the workspaces here, we're gonna to go to graphics. And then you'll see the workstation adjusts a little bit here where, um, where the graphics tab opens up and let's find ourselves a nice little intro. So I found it right here, Engle Pre Engle Presents. Engled Presents, let's grab that. Let's throw it right on top on the next track up. And actually, I don't like this one. Let's, let's grab a different one. I don't care too much for that one. Let's scroll down a little bit. I feel like there's gotta be a better one here. Here we go, Bold Presents. The way it opens up, it looks great. It's just a little small. We have a scale tab here, and this is where we're going to actually enlarge it. So we'll make it bigger this way. Drag this value up, or you can type it in by double clicking. And let's just see what it looks like now. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's tr trim off the end so it lines up with the next clip right on the beat. There we go. And obviously we don't want it to say presents, change that here. You will be presented with a whole slew of new options. Don't worry, they all have their own role and you don't have to adjust each one of them. 
Um, all we're gonna look at right now is the actual text itself. So to change the text, double click it on the program monitor. His name is Snowy Forest. And there we have it. So one thing I didn't really talk about here was a color correction and color grading process. I'm gonna save that for another video, but here's a quick overview of what Premiere offers out of the box. So you can change things from like exposure, contrast, the shadows, the highlights, the whites and blacks, all the essential coloring needs that you would use to correct or grade any clip. You can even go as far as targeting specific color on the overall image and shifting it to whatever you like. You can even change things like the hue, luminosity, and color curves. Now, assuming that we finished our project and we're ready to export this as a final video file, what we'll do is go up to File, Export, and then Media. Now, from here, we have the preview of our video to the left and some options to the right. I generally suggest to stick with H.264. You have a lot of different options here, but to make it easy, just stick with H.264. You'll probably be happy with the results. That's recommended if you don't really know where to start with this, but if you want a good export, go with H.264. Make sure you have audio checked if you want to make sure your audio and music is exported with your video. And you'll see a summary. I have a previous video here. Let's change the path. I'm going to create a folder called exports and put it in there. Snowy forest, good. And our output is now correct. If we scroll down a little more, you'll see we have some more information on the video. This should all look good already. If you want to really push your quality to its max, click render at maximum depth. Keep on scrolling down. I would change VBR one pass to two pass. That will spend a little more time during the render process, but you will get a higher quality video. And then you can bring these up as high as you want. Just put it at 30 VBR pass two. You're, you'll be set. Use maximum render quality. That's what I normally do. And then check use previews. These are all ways to get a higher quality export. If you look at the estimated file size, it gives you 49 megabytes. That's great. And finally click export. Okay, it's done exporting. Let's pull up our video file. Let's go to our export folder and here we are, Snowy Forest. Let's bring it down here and there it is. As I said in the beginning, these are all just basically the essentials of Premiere. And it's enough from what I believe that will get you through a basic edit. So if you want to learn more, keep an eye out for more videos. I'm gonna go more in depth with color correction and speed ramps and more effects and different crazy things that you can do with Premiere. This program's amazing. We are just opening up this can of amazing sauce and um, I'm just stoked. So if you feel like you've learned something, please consider subscribing, like the video if it helped you, ring the notification bell to be notified when I upload more of these types of tutorials. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Peace guys.